Yo, Mo. What's up, Matt? You want some pepperoni pizza? Got some in the kitchen? Nope. I don't eat pork products. What about a ham sandwich? Nope. That's pork. Bacon bits? Still pork. Mo. Yes, Matt. Do Muslims uh, hate the pig? Assalamu alaikum, what's going on everybody? The one question Muslims around the world hear on a daily basis. Do Muslims hate pigs? Oh boy, where do I even begin? Bibul, Bibul, listen to me. Muslims don't have an agenda, a full-on campaign against the evil, filthy, dirty, piglet son of a pig. Muslims don't hate piglet. Muslims don't hate Miss Piggy. And Muslims don't hate Pumbaa. We simply don't eat pigs. That's it. If anything, we don't do this to pigs. Although he's probably feeling the love though, right? So the main question becomes, okay, if you don't hate pigs, then why don't you eat them? Here is why Muslims don't eat pigs. Number one, God told us not to. Done. Khalas. End of story. Allah says in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 173. <laughs> In other words, it's against our religion. And in many other chapters and verses in the Quran, such as chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 16, there are similar verses that tell us not to eat or consume pork. This alone should be enough for Muslims to not consume pork products. And as Muslims, we believe that Allah would not command us to do something unless it is beneficial for us and Allah would not command us to leave something unless it is harmful for us. Am I right? This brings me to number two. If you're a very inquisitive Muslim or you're not a Muslim or you don't even believe in God, here is the logic behind why we as humans should stay away from consuming pork products. For starters, pigs are one of the dirtier animals out there. For example, they don't have sweat glands. In other words, pigs can't sweat. So when somebody tells you they're sweating like a pig, tell them that statement is factually and scientifically incorrect. Cause pigs can't sweat. Therefore, that is why pigs roll in the mud. It's for cooling off purposes. Look at that, learning something new every day. Pigs will also eat anything. No, literally, like anything, anything edible. They'll eat anything from trash all the way to diseased and dead animals. In a manner of speaking, they are nature's garbage disposal. Which is an important role in nature. Pig meat has also been linked to numerous diseases. It contains things like pinworm, roundworm, tapeworm, which is particularly nasty because it starts in the intestines and then it can enter through your bloodstream and it can reach vital organs like your heart, your brain. It can even impact your eyesight. And by the time you realize you're impacted by it, it's too little, too late. Other illnesses that can be caused include hypertension and atherosclerosis due to the fatty contents of the meat. At this point, you're probably thinking, in the past, these diseases may have taken place, but now the pigs are growing in a clean, hygienic environment. Although that may be true, which it isn't, because the majority of pigs are actually still growing up and being raised in factory farms, which is the farthest thing, the farthest thing from <laughs> clean and hygienic. Even if they were raised in a clean environment, their digestive systems are not the same as other animals, whereby they do not fully digest their food properly. Pigs have the quickest and the poorest digestive system. Therefore, you can have a pig that's healthy, goes to the gym on a daily basis, drinks kombucha, and for the past six months has decided to go on the ketogenic diet and is now currently in a state of ketosis. Homeboy can even shower twice a day. With Mr. Pig doing all the aforementioned activities, that pig can still carry the same diseases. But don't let this Muslim tell you this. Let's let someone else tell you. 
Consumer Reports study found a high rate of contamination in pork chops and ground pork from a kind of bacteria that can send you to the emergency room. ABC's Dr. Richard Besser brings us the whole picture. You don't know its name, but you may be one of the 100,000 Americans who get sick each year from a bacteria called Yersinia. And today's study explains why. Consumer Reports tested pork, the types you'd buy in the supermarket, including pork chops and ground pork. They found that nearly 70% of the samples they tested had the dangerous bacteria Yersinia on them. Ground pork turned out to be even more risky than pork chops. This bacteria can hit hard. In a matter of days, you'll experience fever, cramps, bloody diarrhea that may last for weeks, especially common in children. Cooking the pork thoroughly does kill this bacteria, but be careful. It's easy to spread it to the surfaces of your kitchen, the plate, the cutting board, your hands, anything the raw pork touched. Take a look at this kitchen where we handled meat. All the dots, germs. And what's the basic reply to this? Well, you know, this is something that's easily preventable. You need to cook your pork. You wanna make sure that you bring it to an internal temperature of 145 degrees for whole pork, 160 for ground pork. You wanna make sure that you don't contaminate your kitchen by using separate uh, cutting boards for raw food. For, for raw pork and, and vegetables, and always wash your hands whenever you've handled, and handled raw food. And is this bacon too, or just ground pork? Well, there's never been an outbreak from bacon, but you have to treat that like a raw product too, and cook it well. Yeah, that's right. Just wash your hands and cook the food real good in high temperature. That'll kill the bacteria. Actually, even cooking the meat doesn't fully guarantee the elimination of all the harmful bacteria. Even the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, they recommend first you freeze the meat and then you cook the meat to an internal temperature of 160 degrees Fahrenheit just in order to kill the worms in the meat and then it could be safe for consumption. Just think about it. You have to commit worm genocide to eat a meat that is infested with disease, whereby if you even slightly undercook it, you can risk catching an incurable disease. Why? Because it tastes good. Fair enough. So if you can't eat pig, then what can you eat? Almost everything else. Beef, lamb, goat, chicken, turkey, fish. Oh, and plants. Don't forget about those. Remember people, you need your fibers. Anyways, I know at this point I'm starting to sound and come off a little bit as a preacher. Or even a vegan. I know you think I'm like three seconds away from marching down the street and yelling, meat is murder. Man, just looking at this really makes me want to eat some steak right now. But honestly, I understand why people are skeptical. Sure, hundreds of thousands of people in North America do get impacted by diseases that are directly linked to pig meat. And this is as a result from over-consuming pork products. But these are out of millions and millions of people. So most people will just think, well, what are the odds? And although tens of millions of people do get illnesses directly linked to pig meat, many of those people are in less developed countries. So people do tend to dismiss this. And people do get diseases from a bunch of other things as well, not just pig meat. Some people eat pigs and stay healthy. Some people don't eat pigs and get sick. I understand that too. However, everything I just mentioned, those are facts revolving around the consumption of pork products. But you can do whatever you want. And by the way, this is not an attack on anyone who's eating pork products. I'm not gonna walk up to you in a restaurant, see you eating a pepperoni pizza and just slap it out of your hand. Or will I? No, I won't. And just an FYI, Islam is not the only religion that says don't eat pork. In Christianity and Judaism, the consumption of pork is prohibited as well. For example, in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 and 8, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, in Isaiah chapter 65, all these chapters contain verses that warn against eating and consuming pork flesh because it is unclean or harmful. Hold up, hold up. So why would God create the swine if it's harmful for us and we shouldn't eat it? Great question, dude who looks like me. Everything God created has a purpose and a place in this world. It doesn't mean we have to put everything in our mouths. In conclusion, I have explained what Islam's perspective on pork is and the logic behind it being not allowed or prohibited, also known as haram. But at the end of the day, everyone's free to do whatever they want. Make your own decisions, but only you have to live with the consequences. Thank you very much for watching. 
Please like this video, subscribe to my channel because apparently I like it when people watch my videos. And until next time, I'm that Muslim guy. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you.